If you want to prevent the risks of cancer, then understanding how cancer takes place at a cellular level can help you make informed choices in your daily life. Because, well, cancer starts at the cellular level and grows big enough to cause trouble for you. And it turns out that there are certain things that can fuel the growth and spread of cancer cells. In today's video, let's learn about things that cancer has been shown to feed on. By identifying and avoiding these triggers, you'll be able to take proactive steps and avoid those bad things to reduce your risk of getting cancer in the first place. Number 1. Glucose Just like every cell in our body, cancer cells need energy to grow. And that energy comes from glucose. In fact, cancer cells often consume glucose at a much higher rate than normal cells. This ability of cancer cells to use glucose is even used as a basis to diagnose certain types of cancers. Another thing is that normal cells prefer getting their energy through a process called oxidative phosphorylation, which is a very efficient way of using oxygen and glucose to produce energy. Cancer cells, on the other hand, tend to rely more on a process called aerobic glycolysis. This preference for aerobic glycolysis is known as the Warburg effect. But of course, that doesn't mean you should skip taking sugar or anything else that gets digested by our body to make glucose. But there is a healthier way. Stevia is a natural sweetener derived from the leaves of the stevia plant. It is calorie-free and does not raise blood sugar levels. Stevia is available in many forms, including liquid drops and powdered extracts. Other better alternatives to conventional sugar are pure maple syrup, monk fruit extract, coconut sugar, and molasses. Plus, take enough carbs for your body as they're needed for energy, and include more fiber and protein-based food sources to have a more balanced approach for your body to get energy and nutrients. Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. If you find our videos helpful, please support us by becoming a patron. Number 2. Insulin and IGF Insulin and IGF are two hormones that are crucial for our cells to produce energy and grow. Insulin makes it easier for cells to absorb sugar and make energy from it. While IGF, specifically IGF-1, is often referred to as growth hormone, one that tells our cells to grow and multiply, especially the ones in our bones, muscles, and connective tissues. Now let's see what's their relation with cancer. Insulin resistance is a condition in which cells become less responsive to insulin. In response, the pancreas produces more insulin, leading to high insulin levels in your bloodstream. Those high insulin levels are also known to increase the production of IGF-1, one that tells our cells to grow and multiply, including cancer cells. And probably that's why insulin resistance has been linked to a high risk of many types of cancers, including breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and pancreatic cancer. So you can understand why maintaining your blood sugar levels and avoiding too many sugary things is so important. They can increase your risk of getting overweight, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, and even many types of cancers. Number 3. Amino Acids Our body uses amino acids to make proteins for our muscles and even our DNA. Plus, they are important for many functions, like repairing tissues and producing hormones. Cancer cells grow and divide really fast. To do that, they need lots of amino acids to do similar things for themselves, like DNA replication, cell signaling, and sometimes to make new proteins. Plus, they can also use these amino acids to make energy in certain conditions. Moreover, our blood vessels carry nutrients around our bodies, including amino acids. Cancer cells can sometimes take these blood vessels and use them to build the proteins they need to grow and divide rapidly. But once again, that doesn't mean you'll have to stop your protein intake to avoid cancer. Experts are working on ways to block this amino acid supply to cancer cells, which could help slow down their growth. Number 4. Fatty Acids Fatty acids are like building blocks that our body uses to make fat. They're important for storing energy and making cell membranes. However, Cancer cells can take fatty acids from the blood and use them for their own growth. So having plenty of fatty acids makes it easier for cancer cells to grow into a tumor and even spread to other parts of the body. These fatty acids can be saturated fatty acids, like the ones present in red meat and dairy products, and omega-6 fatty acids, like the ones present in vegetable oils. Omega-3 fatty acids, on the other hand, 
have been shown to reduce inflammation and even stop cancer cell growth in some studies. Number 5. Angiogenesis Promoters Cancer cells need a consistent blood and nutrient supply to grow and spread. Surprisingly, they can send out special chemical signals that tell the body to make more blood vessels. These signals are called angiogenesis promoters. As a result, the blood vessels start to grow and form new branches. Once these new blood vessels connect to the cancer cells, they bring in nutrients and oxygen, which are like food for the cancer cells. This helps them grow and spread even more. This is a big part of why cancer can be so tough to stop. Several anti-angiogenic drugs have been developed and are used in cancer therapy. These drugs target specific proteins and signaling pathways involved in angiogenesis and can slow down further development of cancer cells. Luckily, some natural compounds found in foods and plants have anti-angiogenic properties. These include resveratrol, which is present in red grapes, catechins, which are present in green tea, curcumin, which is found in turmeric, and certain flavonoids. Their use as anti-angiogenic agents is an area of ongoing research, but you can definitely include them in your daily diet to reduce your risk of cancers. Number 6. Certain Hormones Cancer cells can sometimes grow faster when they come into contact with certain hormones. I've already told you about insulin and IGF-1 hormone. There are other hormones that act like special signals, telling the cancer cells to multiply and spread. For example, consistently high levels of cortisol can promote the growth of some cancers, such as lymphomas or lymph cancers. Thyroid hormones play an important role in how our body produces energy from the food we eat, so they can affect the growth of cancers too. Even irregularities in sexual hormones, like estrogen in women and testosterone in men have been linked to certain types of cancers, like breast cancer and uterine cancer in women and prostate cancer in men. All of that means that you should not take hormonal irregularities lightly and get yourself checked as soon as you notice them. Number 7. Inflammatory Signals Chronic inflammation is another major risk factor for cancer and many chronic conditions. Inflammation is like a warning sign in the body, telling it that something's not right. And this happens when our body's defense system responds to an injury or an infection. When there's inflammation, our body sends out signals to let it know that there's a problem. Cancer cells can pick up on these signals and use them to their advantage. These inflammatory signals trigger our body to release more sugar, which cancer cells can use to get energy, like in the Warburg effect I told you about. Chronic inflammation can also cause DNA damage and genetic mutations in cells, leading to a higher risk of developing cancer cells and tumors. Anyhow, there are many natural and awesome foods that have anti-inflammatory properties, like berries, fatty fish, leafy greens, turmeric, ginger, nuts, extra virgin olive oil, tomatoes, and green tea. Include them in your balanced diet to keep inflammation in check. Thank you for watching and subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video.